Welcome to the Cambridge House World Investment Conference held up here in Vancouver, British Columbia at the Convention Center West. I am Al Corlin. I am fortunate in that I take a part in this show, and I have been taking a part in these shows every year for the past 15 or 20 years. Excellent, excellent investment forums, excellent, excellent educational forums. What you're about to see is not Al Corlin's opinion of the show, but what other people are saying, and I think you'll agree you're going to want to attend next year. Oh, we're very pleased. I mean, uh, this is our sixth year doing the conference in June. Um, getting a little close to summertime, but uh, a great opportunity for investors to come out here with the uh gurus have to say, what the experts have to say about uh, what's coming down the, uh, the road as far as uh, opportunities to invest and profit in the resource sector. And there's a lot of companies here, uh, over 200 uh, exhibiting companies that uh, have lots of uh, projects going on through the summer, lots of development plans. Um, typically the summer is a bit of a soft time in the market, so it's actually a good time uh, to get in there and wade around through uh, a number of these quality juniors and uh, pick them up in July, August, and oftentimes you'll see a, a rally in the fall when drill results come out, uh, etc. So it's an excellent time to be shopping for, for some of the juniors. Well, the conference has been a little slower than, than typical, but um, you know the uh, markets are difficult as, as everybody's seen over the last little while. But once again, this is an industry of hardcore people, people who really believe in the precious metals industry as a whole. And so, like always, we see the people that matter here. I think it's the attendance is down, that kind of the buzz is down, because the markets in general are are down, and uh, when, when the markets are down, people are just not feeling as, as enthusiastic, which is really unfortunate because at a time like this, when the prices are down, is absolutely the best time to be getting involved, in whether it's, it's uh, commodity companies or any other sector, the best time to be investing is when things are down. Uh, I think the show's been a good one. I, you have to look at any show in the context of the market, also in the weather. The weather's been lousy in Vancouver in the last two months. Uh, there's a very good attendance today. Uh, I think that there's certainly a very good group of companies. And, and for a gold plus uh, base metals oriented conference, uh, I think it's doing quite well. Well, we've been hearing, uh, you know, that there's the rare earth uh, element uh, companies out there, lithium, uh, vanadium, uh, rhodium, uh, the EMs uh, seem to uh, be somewhat in vogue, uh, part of the clean energy, green technology uh, spectrum, um, battery, electrical uh, car power, etc. vanadium. Um, gold is always a big one here at our conferences, you know, with gold over $1,200 an ounce. I think that people have to be careful about the buzz right now. If you walk down any of the halls, it's very lithium and rare earth oriented. Uh, be very careful about these just because it's rare earth, they're very far from rare. And a lot of these companies are trying to promote, you know, value in situ. There's a big difference between uh, value in ground and outside the ground, so be careful with that. Uh, gold this morning was on another tear, it was up $17, 20 This morning we think it'll do a top at around $12.50. And silver, which had sold off considerably from $19.5 to around $17.25, it was back up $0.40 cents again this morning. So we can see the divergence among the metals and the shares. We can see that companies like this company are going to do well and have a great future. There's no question about it. Certain shows have a lot of buzz, whether it's rare earths or whether it's silver or the base metals, and I don't, I don't find that this time. Uh, everybody seems to be fairly buoyant and optimistic about all the metals, with a little bit of a backdrop of concern over the broader markets. But as a, uh, a real hot item like we saw with uranium perhaps a few years ago, I don't, I don't see it this conference. The reason for the attention on gold is, is because people are looking for safe haven, they're looking for security. And for that reason, um, gold seems to be at, at the top of, of the heap at this moment. And you know, the gold price is, is up near record territory right now. So it, it comes back to the comments a moment ago that uh, you know people are piling into gold at, at the top of the market, and they're ignoring other commodities when uh, when probably the greatest upside potential is, is in the other commodities that are uh, being completely ignored by investors at this time. I think right now everyone's uh, excited about gold. Some people are excited about base metals. We're excited about base metals. And uh, everyone's looking for a good, good
good company to buy? Well, without question. The, uh, the markets are in turmoil. They're, we're in the middle of a very major shift from uh, a Western to an Eastern focus in the markets. Uh, the West is indebted. People are unsure of paper currencies. They're buying gold. There was an old maxim uh, that you should own 5 or 10% of your portfolio in gold or gold holdings that went by the wayside. That is coming back very much in the favor. During that process, gold should be a very good place to be. Well, I mean, in, in terms of the hot commodities, it, it's still, in, in as much as nothing's that hot right now, um, the hot commodities are more in, in, the, in the gold space. Copper, it's, it's a difficult week to have a show because copper today, if you look at the copper graph, broke through its support level. And if you're a chartist, you'd say, oh, copper is going a lot, potentially a lot lower. Now, I'm not an expert on copper. Uh, gold graph says I'm going higher. Uh, most base metal graphs say I'm going lower. Um, it's always difficult around here to tell a base metal story. In Canada, it's, unless it's nickel, I mean, at, at times it's great. But in terms, gold will continue because people know that for a gold story, and I'm a technical, right, so I'll, I'll say it. With a gold story, if you find 100,000 ounces of high grade, chances are you can mine it. In the base metal space, good luck. You can have 100,000 tons of the highest grade copper you want, then what? So that tends to be, in a skeptical market, they'll always fall back on gold. The area that I like most right now are companies that have already made a discovery, what we call development stage companies, where they're taking a deposit where they've already outlined it and they're advancing toward production. The upside potential there is enormous and you're not taking on the discovery risk. So you, you get that balance of, of still having great upside potential without having the, uh, the big risk of a company that hopes to make a discovery next week. I think that the correction going on right now in the U.S. geothermals, right now a company like Ram Power, which is you know, well-funded, management team with a proven track record, that's where I think in great values, uh, magma energy, but be careful with the companies who can't finance in a bad market and need to spend money, and it's going to be a tough market. Um, I like Mill Rock Resources. Prospect Generator, and they have um, joint venture partners spending much money on a number of their projects, and their partners are um, major mining companies, so that's always a plus. East Asia Minerals who are here, they've been a, a big, big success for us already. Uh, they are, in our opinion, priced to, to their current results. They still have a lot of untested ground, so I, I would have to put them at the top of the list. And both they have the success, the likelihood of them being taken over by a senior producer, in our view, is very large. That would, that would probably top the list today. Uh, another one which is here is more of a future story and perhaps a, a, a little more interesting in that sense is a company called Marisol. They're working on high-grade silver gold veins in Argentina. They have had a success. They've been recognized for that success. They've put a second very strong project on the table that they'll be drilling later in the year. That's one that we're very much focused on right now with a, with a future accent towards the end of the year. If people are looking at entering the space, um, always go with a, well, I mean, you can hear Rick Rule and other people will tell you how to invest, but apart from the management side, if a company has cash, that mean they had, means they had the credibility to get there. Cash first. Then, then have a resource, a deposit, because you can always fall back on that. There's always value in having a deposit. And then you say, what's your burn rate? Are the rigs turning? give me that news flow. If they don't have any almost guaranteed news flow where you can expect to have a positive result, then leave it alone. And, and that will separate. Only 15% of the companies in this room will give you the answers to those questions. The rest of them are, well, you know, we could be, we could be that. We're trying to do this. But um, there you go. Well, we just want to encourage you to go to our website at CambridgeHealth.com. Keep an eye on our upcoming events. We're going to be in Toronto in September, Montreal in November. We're back here in Vancouver in January. Uh, again, our conference is, is free to attend, um, and we offer a wealth of information over the two days. Anybody who has any exposure to investing in the resource sector really owes it to themselves to come to conferences of this nature. Uh, it's one-stop shopping as far as uh, education goes and opportunities, and uh, definitely you, you need to make time to attend.
Okay, there you have it. It's been a pleasure attending the Cambridge House World Investment Conference up here in Vancouver, British Columbia. We'll be back next time.